<laughs> hey, hey, it's good to be back, John. Ah, you're telling me, Brandon. Woo. <sighs> you know, I love Hawaii, uh -huh. but nothing says home like your basement. Oh, you know, I was just thinking the same thing. I mean, Antarctica is cool. Actually, it's really cold, but it's pretty good being back here in the old studio. I got you a souvenir. What? I love pineapples! I knew you would. You... Ow. Hey, I got you something too. Oh, you didn't have to do hey, that. That's what friends do. Okay. You ready? Oh, oh, sure. Whoosh! It's a Yeti! Thank you. What's the best gift you've ever received? Maybe you walked outside on your birthday to find a brand new bike with no training wheels. Or like me, your parents got you guitar lessons so you could learn to play your favorite songs. Maybe you got to take a trip someplace awesome. Wow. Your favorite gift might even have been a video game console or the chance to spend the day with your favorite person. These are all fantastic presents, but eventually things break and the fun experiences are over. You have to go back to everyday life and wait forever until Christmas or your birthday comes around again. But there's one gift you never have to wait for. One gift you can open every single day. In Ephesians, Paul writes, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Faith in God is an incredible gift from God. When you have faith, you know that God is always with you, even in tough situations. When you have faith, you learn to trust God for wisdom as you walk through your day. And when you have faith, you know that God has promised to make everything right in the end for those who follow Jesus. When you choose to open God's amazing gift of faith, you begin to live with more hope and show more love. Then others can see God at work in you. That's why making a move in faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud.
Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of God's most amazing gift to us. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. I have never seen the country of Greece myself, but my aunt just sent me something really cool from Athens. Is that the, uh, the, um, uh, oh, I know this. The, oh, the Parthenon, part of the Acropolis, right? It sure is. Oh, let's take a closer look. Ready, set, move. The Acropolis in Athens, Greece was built centuries before Jesus on a rocky outcrop overlooking the sea. You know, this is a very awesome gift. I know, right? Whoa, your aunt dedicated some serious shipping weight to this. Yep. But it's got nothing on the real Acropolis. This building, the Parthenon, uses 22,000 tons of marble. Whoa, how do they hold all that up? The ancient Greeks used Doric columns for support. These columns are wider at the base, tapering up to a narrower top. They hold up beams to transfer weight. I want a closer look. Do you think we can take a trip to Athens? Not in the budget. But these are... Oh, cup game! A little focus here. Cups, Athens, columns? I know how we can create our own columns right here. Well, why didn't you say so? Let's, Let's make, make it. it! Here's your column. Wide at the bottom, narrower at the top. I don't know, it looks like a pretty pathetic column to me. See? Columns aren't meant to work alone. They have to share the weight. Step one, place six cups in two even rows on the floor. Step two, place a tray or a piece of cardboard on top of the cups. Step three, step on the tray. Uh, you first, architect. Check it out! Whoa, you crushed it! I mean, you crushed it by not crushing it. Your turn. Hmm. Can we take it up a level? Let's find out! Okay, you ready? Yep. Whew. Stepping up. You don't really need the extra height. How high can we go? What do you think we need for this? Step ladder, definitely. Gotcha. Whew. You ready, Zeke? Go for it. Get behind me, please. Just... Whoa! I think I can see Athens from up here. Speaking of which, our story today has a letter written to a church right across the sea from Athens. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Ephesians, which is a letter written by Paul to the new believers in Ephesus. But before Ephesians, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. The Apostle Paul traveled thousands of miles to tell about Jesus and started many new churches, including the one in Ephesus. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, call me Brian. So, just as the name says, Paul wrote the letter of Ephesians to the church in, you guessed it, Ephesus. Now at that time, Ephesus was one of the greatest seaports in the world. It had grown up on the Aegean Sea right at the mouth of the Caister River. The city was at the hub of several major roads too. All of this meant that the people of Ephesus came from a wide variety of backgrounds and cultures, and the church in Ephesus reflected that. Jewish people and non-Jewish people, rich people and poor people, together. 
they were learning what it meant to follow Jesus. Now, Paul had twice been to Ephesus. The first time was just a short visit, but the second time, he stayed for more than two years. During this time, many people became believers and were baptized. Several years after his stay in Ephesus, Paul was arrested for preaching about Jesus and ended up imprisoned in Rome. But he didn't just sit around and let that time go to waste. The church at Ephesus was still on his heart. So, he wrote them a letter. I am sending this letter to you, God's holy people in Ephesus. Because you belong to Christ Jesus, you are faithful. Through his letter, Paul wanted the believers to know that they were chosen by God through the work of Christ and adopted as sons and daughters. In chapter 2, Paul writes, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do, it's God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. Okay, there is so much packed into these two verses. So let's start with the word grace. Now we hear that tossed around a lot. You might have a, a grace period before getting fined on your overdue library book. Or maybe your dance teacher wants you to move with grace. Maybe your family says grace before a meal. But this grace, the kind of grace Paul writes about, means simply unmerited favor. Grace is getting something you don't deserve, something you didn't earn. You have nothing to do with it, except that someone chose you. You might think of it this way. Let's say you're at a big state fair with all kinds of awesome rides and games, but you don't have any tickets. All you can do is walk around and watch. You're left out of the fun. Then, out of nowhere, Someone who's leaving the fair offers you all of their remaining tickets. <laughs> you didn't ask for these tickets. You didn't pay a penny. But now, those tickets are yours. And you're about to have the time of your life. That sense of surprise and excitement, that's what it can feel like when somebody gives you a wonderful, unexpected gift. That's grace. And when it comes to the gift of salvation, that someone is God. You see, every single one of us has turned away from God, starting with the very first people. We've all done wrong things, and the consequences of that sin is separation from God. But Jesus changed all that. He took our consequences so that we can be saved, so that we don't have to be separated from God. Salvation starts in the heart of God. It's an outpouring of God's deep, deep love for us. Now God offers salvation to each one of us as grace, a complete and total gift. You might picture it like this. Say you're on a boat. You spot a school of colorful fish in the water below. So you lean way over the rail to see, so far over uh, that you lose your balance and fall in. You can't swim well. And you're desperate to keep your head above water. You gasp for air. But just as you think, you can't hold on any longer. The captain tosses out a life ring. Whew. Now you got something to hold on to. You're going to make it. Even though you didn't do a thing to deserve it or earn it, your only job is to grab that life ring and hold on tight. Now it's tempting to think that there's something we can do to make us more deserving of God's gift, like, uh, like going to church praying a lot, doing good stuff. And yeah, those are all really great things, but not one of them will help you earn life with God forever. We need God to do a work in our hearts. God gives us the grace to believe in who Jesus is and what he did for us. And only then are we able to put our faith in Jesus and choose to follow him. It's an incredible gift, one worth hearing again. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. The most awesome thing is that God offers this amazing gift to everyone. It doesn't matter where you're from, how you speak, what you look like, what you've done. God's grace is for you. Jesus is for you. Salvation 
is for you. So is that the end? Well, it's really more of a wide open door than an ending. You know, I've heard these verses before and it's really easy to just brush right past them. But if you actually stop and think about them, it's just, wow. It's truly amazing. So what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Salvation is a wide open invitation to step into God's story. God made each of us in God's very own image to play a unique part in this epic adventure. And the first step is simply to believe in who Jesus is and what he's done for us. It doesn't have to be a big dramatic moment. And you won't suddenly magically have a life with no problems. Right, but over time, God will show you more and more about Jesus. God will give you grace to turn away from the wrong things you've done and choose to follow Jesus. You can simply talk to God in a quiet place on your own. But it's also a great idea to talk and pray with someone who's following Jesus for a while, like a parent or a small group leader. Yeah, and as you begin to experience God's amazing gift of salvation, you can share it with others. Because Jesus is for everyone. Bye, George, I think you've got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Jesus is a gift for everyone. And my gift to you is how to play the cup game. <sighs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. Okay, show me how. All right. Simple. I'm Brandon, and, and welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. Okay, John, let me ask your opinion about something. I don't like that shirt. I want to no, not about my shirt. Oh. I, you don't like my shirt? What I was gonna say was, we've gone on a lot of trips so far this summer. Oh yes, we have. Where do you think we should go next? Uh, oh. Horseback riding through the Canadian Rockies with a French guide who only speaks German while playing the banjo. No, that was last Thursday. Somewhere we haven't gone. Oh, a Jurassic Park. Not a real place. Narnia. John. Okay, there's so many places to choose from. No. Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's check out our trip jar to see what we can afford. That'll oh, help us narrow down the options. Good there. idea. All right, see? Trip jar. Whoa, that right. feels heavy. Really? Yeah. That's real metal. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, so to fund our next trip, we've got 47 cents and some tokens from Porky's Pizza Palace in Arcade and two coupons for 50% off a car wash. So uh, not enough for a trip. We can go on a car wash? Or we could stay here and welcome someone who knows stuff. Ooh. Too long. I don't care for you. Here, let me clean this up for you. Yeah. How you doing, mate? Oh, great. So good to see you again. Hey, Ryan, good to have you back. Uh, for those who haven't met you, tell us who you are and what you know. Uh, well, my name's Ryan, and I'm an animal expert. I travel all around the world studying, learning about animals. Oh, and something you may not know about me, 
I'm Australian. Really? No idea. Too right. I brought me boomer and everything. Need it? Oh, whoa! That's that's great, isn't it? Supposed to uh, come back or? Most of the time. Hmm. Well, what are we doing sitting here on our bums? A little birdie told me that you two like to travel. So are you ready to go on an adventure? Uh, uh, sorry, Ryan, we can't really afford to go on any trips right now. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have to. This adventure's an all expense paid trip by me. It's my gift to you. Oh, oh wow, that's Let's really great. Go. Oh, okay. Hey. I mean, come on, mate. Okay. Think they got car washes where we're going? Uh, maybe. Did we really need to fly around the world to get to my backyard? Hide! Oof. Don't make a sound. There's wild animals all over the place. Oh, like right over there. That's a remarkable specimen of the long-tailed mouse catcher. Isn't that your neighbor's cat? Yeah, that's Miss Fancy Feet. <laughs> Dead on you, she's magnificent. She's majestic! She's ferocious! <laughs> I never really thought about it, but she really is quite beautiful. Oh! Look over there! I didn't think I'd be able to show you one of these today! <laughs> That's the gray acorn scavenger! Just a beaut! Oh, it's a cute little squirrel! <laughs> oh, what a little corker! Now, did you know that trees need squirrels to make more trees? What? Yes, it's true! They count on the squirrels to hide the acorns and then forget where they hid them. And then they have trees growing further away instead of right underneath itself. Wow, that's so cool. Oh, yep. oh it gets a lot cooler. <gasps> a cricket. A katydid. did. A brown thrasher. A ladybug. An elephant. <laughs> or chick more. So many adventures to find right in your own backyard. <laughs> so what'd you think, mate? Uh, that, that was amazing, Ryan. Thank you so much. How can we ever repay you? Oh, it was my pleasure. Hey, uh, this may be my favorite trip so far. Wow, yeah, me too. It was fun, but but Narnia would have been better. Oh. 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 What do you know? It came back. Told you. You can keep that as a gift too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right there. There you go, mm -hmm. mate. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh, banana. Got it. Hey, fellas. Hey, Kellen. Hey, Kellen. Now, I have to give it up to Ryan. She set up today's story perfectly. Oh, is today's story about hitting people in the head with boomerangs? No, but it is about gifts, and the gifts you can't repay. Alrighty then, take it away. Okay, quick setup. Today's story is actually just two verses, and it comes from the book of Ephesians, which is a letter written by Paul to new Jesus followers in the city of Ephesus. Now, back then, a lot of people believe that you had to follow a ton of rules to make yourself right with God. And if you didn't follow those rules, you had to pay for all the rules you broke. Then of course, Jesus came along and changed everything. This is what Paul wrote. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. Okay, that's a lot, but it's really, really amazing. Let's talk about the word salvation, okay? What exactly is that? Now that is a good question. What is happening? 
Sit back and relax, Cullen, because boy oh boy do I have a deal for you. Looney Larry here with an offer of a lifetime. Looney Larry has absolutely no authority to make this offer. Have you done bad things in your life? Cheated on a test? Lied to your parents? Or even picked on your little sister? No worries. With salvation, all of your problems are taken care of. And now, for the low, low price of $777,000.99, salvation can be yours. Would I lie? No, 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 no. That is whatever that is. That is not what salvation is or how salvation works. Now, it's true. We've all done wrong things or sinned, and there is a price. But salvation comes because Jesus died on the cross to pay that price for us, so we no longer have to. You drive a pretty hard bargain there, Kellen. Well, I'm not- For today only, you can get salvation for the special looty price of just two low, low payments of $388,500 49 and a half cents. Would I lie? No. It costs no money. No money. It is free. It <laughs> Let it be known that Looney Larry is not afraid to haggle. If you act now, you can get salvation for the price of one large donation to a charity. Or saying your prayers or just helping an old lady across the street. Larry, no. Salvation isn't something you get by earning it. Remember what Paul wrote. Salvation is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done, and no one can brag about earning it. <laughs> but you can have it. Would I lie? Okay, okay, I think that's enough of Looney Larry. Get out of here. But he was not lying about one thing. Salvation is something you can have. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Jesus. That's it. It's free. And that's true no matter who you are or what rules you've broken. What do you think, fellas? You know... It is easy to try and, and prove yourself to God, you know, like you're checking things off of a list, you know, going to church, check. Yeah, I prayed, was patient, and said I was sorry today, check, check, and double check. Mm -hmm. And those things aren't bad things. You should do those things, but none of them can earn you salvation. Jesus took care of all of that for you. It's faith in Jesus that saves you. Well said. Whew. And with that, my work here is done. I'll see you next time. Well, Brandon, we had one very unexpected show today. I know, we got a really special gift from Ryan that we didn't earn, yeah. and we learned that God's gift of salvation is absolutely free too. Yeah, totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. Ah, no one even threw it! Reveal the question. <laughs> How do you feel when you get a gift? Oh, I, I love gifts. The excitement, the anticipation. Yeah, yeah, it makes me feel special when someone gives me a gift. Like, I, I really matter to them. Yeah. yeah, what about you? How do you feel when you get a gift? Was that elephant in your backyard a gift? No, I have never seen that elephant in my life before. Oh, weird. It's inside. Run! <laughs> no! <laughs> Where? I don't know! Just run in general! Serpentine! Uh, okay. Okay, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you really sure? I think I've got it this time. Okay. Boomerang's coming back. Maybe we should stop. Yeah. Ow! I'm not scared. Run! <laughs>